Hello oh, and welcome. Good day to you all. Bit of a gloomy day today. Got the sun in my face as usual. Anyways, jumping right in. Um, hey, Herjax. Good morning to you. I'm glad you're here today. Having a good modding morning. And yeah, just jumping right into it with a little bit of uh, TR soundtrack. Uh, rightly a, I hope I pronounced that right, and uh, ASCII, excellent music, and also actually took the liberty of picking up the Skywind soundtrack today too, Frederick, Frederick uh, Jonasson, um, so yeah, that'll eventually flow into that, but uh, I think I'm going to actually add those into my uh, my game soundtrack too, so I guess we're doing a sound check by the way too, so um, assuming you can hear me okay. Uh huh. Moving forward, uh, this old thing. So this would be um, awesome. Thank you, Hudrex. Much appreciated. Uh, area of effect arrows swap. We talked about this going on maybe a couple of weeks ago now. But the area of effect arrows naturalized, not compatible with BCOM. They ship their own. The main blocker here on just moving forward with this is I have some bug in the CFG generator. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to dig deep into that because it's really stuck in, it's stuck in, it's uh, sticking this whole release in the mud, um, and it's something kind of just, you know, it's some nasty spaghetti. Uh, actually, got some feedback from the fine folks that are working on the Wabajack OpenMW Enhanced by my friend OK High, which is basically uh, heavily inspired by Total Overhaul, but certainly their own work. Um, and I got some feedback from their user about Caldera Priory. Um, this is like spoiler material, but it's involving the, I didn't write anything spoilery in my notes, but, uh, there's something involving the boss. Um, so I actually haven't gotten the chance to play Caldera Priory yet. That is like on the, it's on the to-do list, but nobody in the mod issues has really complained. So maybe it's like, you know, something specific on OpenMW, which would probably be a bug in OpenMW if it is the case. Um, somebody else in the same group of people. Uh, mentioned that there is a fairly OP thing here, um, fairly close to, you know, the beginning of the game that could pretty easily be exploited. Um, and it's from Uvirus Legacy. I don't need to really follow up with this to kind of just know, you know. Uvirus Legacy is a fantastic, super fun mod that doesn't care too much about, you know, taking liberties with being um, fun, you know, in the in the OP sense. So I'm not surprised that somebody found this. I never noticed it myself. But I do want to take a look at this and then kind of decide, like, is this something that we want to nerf? Like, you know, there's quite a few scripts in UL. You know, maybe this is a script. Maybe quite a bit of hacking will be required. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not a big fan of uh, patching somebody's work like that exactly when it's like their, you know, personal wish of their, their design. But, uh... You know, like if I'm playing and I don't want to exploit it, I can just not exploit it. I don't need to patch it out, you know. It's kind of the mentality I've taken. So we'll just at least take a look at it. And um, I think I've already decided, you know, probably not going to nerf it. I tend to be very okay with just ignoring stuff like that in game myself. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Settiness actually mentioned to me as an Arch Linux user. Um, we were doing a little bit of back and forth about performance and my app image build. They're using the AOR, AUR build. Um of OpenMW, which is basically a way that people on Arch Linux can get a nightly because the nightly from GitLab doesn't work the same way as it does on Windows uh, exactly for Linux. And uh, so one of the, the one weird trick you want to do when you're building this that I believe they do with the Windows builds um, is they use OpenMW's own fork of OSG and a fork, if you're not aware, is just taking the code and like making your own changes on it and kind of maintaining it in parallel with the upstream because the man, main OSG guy, Robert, didn't exactly want the changes that the OpenMW people did. Um, they were good for OpenMW, but maybe not good for, like, the goals of OSG as a whole. So that's fair, you know. Um, so OpenMW has their own fork of uh, OpenMW OSG, and I build my app image against it as part of the whole process of creating the app image. If you're not familiar, App Image is a Linux executable uh, that notably can easily be ran on a Steam Deck, for example. 
And Sadiness had tried my uh, app image and noted that it was performing better in busy scenes than the AUR build. And at the, you know, uh, TLDR, uh, we boiled it down to, yeah, uh, building against OpenMW OSG definitely makes a difference in like a busy Vivek scene he gained you know, two, three frames per second, which is significant in a very busy scene. So I want to update my documentation to point arch people to that if they're, uh, you know, doing the AUR thing, which they probably are. Um, user Bash Ninja was kind enough to put together a Bash script for Project uh, Project Atlas installation to do stuff. Um, I just have been really busy and haven't gotten to take a look at it. So maybe we could do that today. Uh, a couple of streams back, I mentioned MBSP Uncapped, OpenMW Lua which is a uh, Lua implementation of Magicka-based skill progression, which, if you're not aware, makes it so that when you uh, cast a spell, you get XP skill progress proportionate to the cost of the Magicka. And um, it also includes a couple other nice little bonuses. But yeah, uh, Random Pal was actually kind enough to point me to this and I uh, had no idea it existed and is heavily inspired by my own work with NCGD hey Afane welcome I'm so glad you're here finally able to catch one of your streams thanks for your awesome work with the website hey it's my pleasure and thank you so much for joining and thank you for the compliment uh, I'm happy to do it we're all here happy to be modding so yeah just uh, talking about some cool new OpenMW Lewis stuff hey Gonzo welcome back sir you were missed last week um, yeah, we're just, uh, you know, I'm kind of going through the list of stuff today. Yes, Brother Gonzo. Um, <laughs> just going through the list of stuff today. Uh, and I have actually gotten a couple play sessions in with this one. And, uh, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you might be wondering, well, why did this need to be? I went over this a little bit last weekend, but just for edification of everybody else. You know, why would you want to port magic base skill progression to Lua? What's the advantage? What's the big advantage? Um, and the main advantage that you'll find a lot in Lua uh, bringing to the table is that it will have better compatibility. So the version of magic base skill progression I am currently recommending on the website uh, with the class spec has you, um, you know, entering what your skills are, major and minor, so that it can appropriately you know give you xp for those things scale it right this one can just kind of figure it out because it can know that via the lua api and then other convenience things right so this person has also taken the liberty of adding skill progress handling and uncapping meaning you know getting your skills and everything above 100 uh this handles getting the skills above 100 ncgd then handles getting your attributes above 100 my code for natural character growth and decay doesn't discriminate currently about 100. It's not a special number. There is no limit coded into my mod. So it'll just work. Um, and uh, Herjax here says, some ground to cover with you later if you have time concerning 6.x. And Gonzo says, oh man, that's great. Hate having to deal with uh, the menu every time I test something. Yeah. The exactly the MBSP actually <laughs> so so Herdrax is talking about some some body mod stuff that we want to look at and Gonzo yeah regarding MBSP I actually made my own personal mod to automate that because I have a I have a specific class that I use I'm a bit of a creature of habit and there's a specific class when I'm like buckling down to really play the game that I use and so I made a MBSP plugin uh, that hacked the script to automatically select the things I wanted because I got so annoyed by going in there and doing that you know um, now we don't have to do that. This happens automatically, um, and not only that, I should, uh... oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, Herjax, the comment was for Gonzo, yep, yep, gotcha there, yep, mm-hmm, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the side chat, awesome, <laughs> that's my bad, um, but yeah, this one, uh, let me just fire it up, I think I have it in my, yeah, I have a, so I have an iHeart Vanilla that I've been testing with. And I've actually put some some goodies into it, like natural character growth decay and uh, this one. Um, so I'll actually fire it up and just show you what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, we can just start at the normal place. And actually, I didn't put it on the list, but there is some interesting features that Delta Plugin has that I never really knew about that would really... 
enable powerful uh, ground cover creation, for example. Um, but I'll get into that in a moment. And let's not have my Morrowind music clashing with my soundtrack. There we go. All right. So if we just look in the script settings menu here, they've got a nice settings menu. Um, I just put the progress menu key to B, personally, because I've got the natural character growth and decay menu on N, so you got B and N right next to each other. And um, you can see the skill progress as handled by this mod. Uh, it also seems to mostly accurately update in the actual in-game progress uh, as well. I guess they uh, are doing some handling of that under the hood. I looked at the code insofar as I was just morbidly curious about, you know, how they could do such a thing without a proper, you know, API access into skill progress. And, uh, excuse me, you know, the answer is they did a crea uh, creative approach to it that works. It's not like hacky or anything um, necessarily, and, and, and it works pretty good. And all the features are here, and you can even configure. This is another thing that's nice. If you wanted to configure these things, in the other mod, you know, uh, somebody else would either have to fork it and make a version that gives you a menu and you'd have to click through the menu and that's more a little bit more tedium. Or you can um, come in here in the menu and set it. Or you can take a step further and do what I have done. And I have actually started to make, uh, perhaps you're familiar with my MOMW camera mod if you've done my mod list. But I also have, uh, oops, uh, let's see here, mods... Uh, where, did, where did I put this thing? Um, bear with me here, kids. There we go. Gameway settings. Okay. Mod settings. You can actually make a Lewis script. Oh, my Emacs. You can actually make a Lewis script that uh, will you know, set stuff for you kind of on the fly. So I've decided, for example, in 0 0.49, uh, always run and toggle sneak are uh, handled via Lua. And I like them true, both of them. So I've made this small little Lua mod that runs when I start the game, sets them to true. If I'm using MBSP, sets the menu to B. If I'm using NCGD, sets the menu to N automatically. Um, I plan on eventually uh, releasing this on the mod list as part of 6.x um, just for people to use as defaults if they want to. This is one of those mods that's, you know, totally skippable um, if somebody wanted to, you know, just a little helper for somebody that wants kind of like a sane default. <clears throat> and then another thing I do here for uh, Ferris's Magicka regen is I automatically set the base multiplier for the mod down a little bit. It defaults to 1.0, which I feel like is, you know, <laughs> you can like fling fireballs pretty easily, you know, and just heal yourself uh, pretty quickly, endlessly with this. So I tone it down quite a bit. I take it from 1.0 to 0 0.06, which ends up being, you know, when you're walking around in the wilderness exploring, it ends up being fast enough for you to sort of get a bit of magicka back that you'll have some in a pinch, you know, um, but not like you can visibly like really watch it fill, you know, you would actually have to sit for a minute to notice it. So I think it's a fair balance. You know, I struggle with the whole issue, and, and please, folks, let me know how you feel, but I struggle with the whole issue of Magicka regen because having Magicka regen feels like a little cheaty because it's just not in the game at all. But it also feels like it's missing. It's one of those things, right? Like the absurd fatigue usage walking, you know, faster than a snail's pace makes you super tired and you have to stop. And that was one of my least favorite things about Morrowind the first time I played it is having to just like walk everywhere slowly and then stop and wait and if I get into a fight when I'm out of fatigue I'm boned that's no fun so anyway this is something you could do um and again I will be sharing that with you folks as we get into 6.x uh whoop, whoa whoa what did I do don't try this at home folks oh me oh my okay so going back to the list though a little bit of a detour there so this is good I've been playing with it and I really like it it works well um, it actually playing with this one helped me notice a potential bug in natural character growth and decay, which is that, uh, neither this mod or my mod, um, handle updates when the GUI is open. We're using a Lua engine handler called on update, which doesn't happen when the GUI is open. Um, I'm switching natural character growth and decay over to on frame to fix that. Recommended to this, uh, person who made this mod to do the same and it should fix issues, potential issues, for example, with barter and speechcraft. 
um, when you're selling or trying to talk somebody up, you know, pardon me, coffee time. So yeah, moving on, uh, GitLab issues backlog. Hudrax was kind enough uh, to file an issue uh, here for examination of bodies and heads. Um, and some of this stuff on here, so first off, thank you so much for the excellent write-up here. Very detailed. It's glorious. And uh, I will say, I have already, just jumping ahead here, I have already integrated this one into my personal setup. The uh, NPC Outfit Diversity. Uh, yeah, I love the detail. Oof, just chef kiss. Beautiful, very beautiful. Um, so I've already done this one, and I got to say, this one, holy smokes, is so good. You know, props to the team that did this one. Uh, Lukavar, just the design on here, on some of these outfits. Um, uh, what's her name? She's the vanilla bartender in Aril's Trade House. Uh, her outfit, just awesome like really fits her character I feel like and it doesn't look you know out of place but yeah just some of these outfits are just so good um you gotta have this and the integration with wares um and all of our other mods that affect NPCs you know um just sweeping into the game so yeah this is really great we're not gonna jump into it uh into too much detail here in a future stream once we've kind of ironed out the details and we have like a working example of this stuff, we'll look at it uh, closely. Um, uh, yeah, Herdrax, <laughs> attitude, reflect, leadership, captain, salute. Yes, sir. I am just glad to be along for the ride with you guys. Hey, we're glad you're here, my man, and I'm glad you took the time of your day to join us and also to write up the issue and help us improve the content of the website. You know, one of the goals of this stream I said here is to share the process of building out and or update the website. And I just want to clarify that this kind of stuff is exactly having you all here in the chat, watching me kind of, you know, yammer on, but also getting feedback in the form of issues. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve here. So it really warms my heart and I really want to thank you. Uh, so moving on, though, we've got uh, other issues here that have popped up uh, on the email side. There's a couple of things uh, that I wanted to look at. Let me actually just pull up my my email client over here. Uh, what was the one that I looked at? I can't find it right now. We'll jump back at that. But there's, there was at least one issue that somebody had thrown at me via email that... Uh, um, that I wanted to look into that seemed kind of like eh, we should check that out. But um, if I don't get into it in the stream, no big deal. Um, this ongoing issue here with our friend Andre, I'm really not sure what's going on. It seems to be an identified conflict between two mods that are on the list, but I don't have the conflict. So I wonder, uh, I'll have to jump back into there and, and suggest some, some changes. Um, oh, and this is another... This is another one that I would really like to get into in future streams, too. Um, nice, you made a checklist. Love it, Gonzo. Thank you. Um, which is, yeah, doing open MWCS specific stuff, creating content, you know, exploring ideas. I figured, too, we could maybe uh, do, like, a really simple Lua mod, like, uh, you know, uh, touch the thing and, and make a pop-up menu or something like that. Um, would be pretty cool, you know. Um, I have a project here on the GitLab for, let's see if I can find it here, for a template mod that somebody could just basically copy paste if they wanted, if you, for example, wanted to, uh, you know, get started with building a mod and have a neato website like I have for my stuff, um, which I, of course, can't pull up right now. But yeah, if you wanted all that, you could just copy paste this repo and sort of have it for your own. So yeah, maybe someday we could work on this um and point people to it via the website you know um and yeah this is one that i've been kind of on and off working uh on which is a patch for our, our better ships and boats and tomb of the snow prince um stuff for 6.x so it's not super urgent but we're gonna obviously want that before we launch the list uh and just in a nutshell <laughs> um tomb of the snow prince makes the anthology soul slime change which moves the island a little bit this way um, better ships made for the original position so it has ships over here out in the middle of nowhere and it's a little awkward we gotta patch those out um, so yeah anyways um, and then hopefully you know with this thing right here this area of effect 
arrow swap gonzo i think you're still afk when i mentioned this but um there's some bug in the cfg generator that has really stopped me from kicking this over the finish line so um i think i'm going to start actually looking at that we're going to time box it if it takes me more than like 15 minutes we're just going to move on i want to put a shout out to you folks if anybody has played caldera priory and gotten to the end please let me know um there's apparently potentially an issue at the end there so uh, we want to identify that if there's some open mw specific bug we want to figure that out you know put in a report and get that fixed um so yeah erm hey man welcome <laughs> i'm so glad you're here dude uh thanks for joining in uh this is erm lua wizard and uh i think a buddy we've been hacking on lua stuff since tes3 mp going back a couple years now man so i'm super stoked that you're here thanks for showing up you can help me uh work on my terrible code <laughs> all right so yeah i'm gonna jump into this cfg generator crap here let's uh, e show. Let's get the server going. And so, yeah, the issue was, uh, if I'm trying to jump back into where I was here, views, forms, yeah, right here. I was ending up with a dupe of this in the in the order that was unexplainable. So once the database is done crunching, we'll see that in action. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. We'll get the website up here for posterity. Right, yeah, Erm says, so you had the same plugin twice in the load order. That's right. My CFG generator actually was like spitting out something that I was trying to take out. It was still putting it in there. And uh, my terrible spaghetti code <laughs> did not easily reveal why. <laughs> so maybe we're looking at this together. And that would uh, this would be the relevant spaghetti code, I think. But uh, once this is uh, done crunching down here, we'll actually see it happen. But yeah, you know, I would ideally like to, once MLOCs can fully read OpenMW and support open OpenMW stuff, uh, I really want to just do away with that aspect of the CFG generator. Uh, Erm says, how do you add stuff to the load order? If you wrap that into the same function call, you can just print debug information to figure out what adds it. Yeah, yeah. So the problem is, <laughs> you're talking about like a sensible, sane way of, of doing that. And unfortunately... The CFG generator didn't quite evolve that way, and it's not really sanely developed. A refactor is something I've really wanted to do to rewrite it to make it sane, because it's not easily debuggable like that. There's so many hard-coded special cases here and there peppered throughout two or three different functions and two or three different files. It's terrible. It's a nightmare. But as I was just saying, like once MLOX can like actually support OpenMW, and I can tell my users, you know, just do that, it's almost like we don't need the CFG generator. Um, I'm open to two ideas on that. Refactoring is very underrated. Yeah, it needs to happen. Like, I'm at the point where this kind of stuff bites me frequently. I feel like it's almost a weekly issue we're looking at hacks in the CFG generator. <laughs> refactoring is a lie. The cake is a lie. Maybe refactoring. I don't know. <laughs> we should ask Todd. But yeah, so anyway, let's, uh, let's see this happen here. Let me just get a sip of my breakfast. All right. Let's break it, shall we? Oh, no. So, taking a step back here, very recently cleaned up this page, and I'm personally really happy with it, but we have a problem. And, I, and that is, I think I went a little bit overboard taking links out. And what I think I want to do is, I think I want to add some footer links for, like, the CFG generator and stuff like that. Basically, anything I want to get right to when I'm on this page that I no longer can. Um, but I don't want to add a bunch more buttons. So, I'm thinking footer link could work. Um, I'm going to add that right now, actually. Slight detour. Bear with me. Okay. Hopefully this won't be hideous. I don't know. We'll see. I just don't want more buttons. I feel like the buttons are clutter. Um. 
All right, let's just see how that looks. Oh, I forgot this page takes a while to load now because we put da more database query in here. Oh no! That's fine, I knew that was wrong. Okay. Hmm. We need to do some CSS here. Oh, my CSS is another thing that probably needs refactoring. <laughs> We're not doing it today. Not doing it. I'm gonna make a copyright class. Oh my, no. <sighs> All right, wait, but wait. I think I know what this is. I think this is our old friend, the browser cache. Maybe? Yeah, kinda, it is that, yeah, okay. Changing too many things at once here. We're not gonna do that. The ID can stay, this can stay. Good, good, good. Now where's my Chrome? Okay, cool. Gonna leave that as is for now. Because <laughs> we need to go back to the CFG generator issue. But I think by the time we finish 5.7, um, we'll have like a working set of footer links down here. And I already don't hate it, even though it's not per, uh, um, you know, perfectly aligned. Urm says, currently trying to fix OpenMW's teal declarations. Awesome, man. Turns out CI doesn't correctly fail on errors for some reason. Ah, awesome. I actually wanted to ask you about that, but I didn't want to bother you. Um, but I'm looking to use Teal for some of my new stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, consider me a potential adopter. I want to put types on basically everything if I can. So I'm definitely interested in that. And another thing I'm interested in that I want to talk to the guy who made that needs mod is he apparently had some editor agnostic LSP declarations that I think would be pretty cool. You know, because the stuff, obviously, the, the other language declaration stuff is cool, but it's very specific to that one editor, you know, that that I don't know how many people use. So, some issues which make it not compile. Cool. Well, yeah, keep me posted. I'm definitely interested. Like I said, I want to put types in all my stuff. And I'm already compiling plugins in CI, you know, so that's no big deal to have, like, a teal compile step. No big deal. All right, let's find this problem now. The thing I wanted to do 10 minutes ago. Let's go back to the code here. And let's open uh, expanded vanilla will be affected by this. Any list with BCOM and naturalized would be. Compile them locally with a script. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I had my fennel mod compiling uh, in an Alpine image in GitLab. Effect arrows. All right, area effect arrows naturalize. Here we go. So it's nice to have Lua files in the repo for people to see. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, that is a good point as, as like a reference. So we can see here, um, whoop, don't try this at home, alt tab fail. So we can see right here, we got the one that we want from BCOM. This is the one we want. This is the one we don't want. And uh, by the way, do you ever use VS Code? <laughs> no, sir, I do not. Uh, so this right here is supposed to be removing that plugin. Um, we can see here that we have Siege, if I can spell it, Age of Firemoth. We don't have the dupe of that. We have just the one that we want, the BCOM. 
uh, well, I'm sorry, the Tamriel Rebuilt one even. I wanted to ask if I'd try your extension for it. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I have VS Code installed, I think. Um, I'm not against trying it. Hang on. Code, VS Code. I can install it. If you want a tester, I'm down for sure, man. But I just, you know, like, I'm so used to, like, my Emacs bindings. It's like Reflex, you know, so I would it would be very jarring for me <laughs> to use it normally. But I'm definitely down to try and give you feedback for sure. And, you know... Uh, maybe we can take some of those ideas and use them in other editors, too. Let me know. Definitely let me know about that. So, yeah, the problem here is, again, that we're, we're area uh, fact arrows. This guy should be gone now. So I wonder what happens. Let's just uh, comments as markdown. Oh, cool. Ooh, I'm interested. Erm says it's called comments as markdown. Please uh, feel free to tell me more about it in the uh, chat there. Uh, I'm intrigued. I'm going to remove this though and just see how that affects our list here. The point is, Erm says, the point is using markdown to document code, including images, latex, charts, etc. Ooh, I love that. That's amazing. Then you can just auto generate documentation, right? And so like as I'm writing the code here, I can just be like, something foo bar and and then that we could use some external process to generate documentation from that nice i love that that's awesome i want to definitely want to try that out and encourage usage of that because most people would use vs code i feel like zach has a cat uses vs code you know he's on a mac it looks like um so regardless of what i use lots of people would do uh use it and you know i could roll something for emacs maybe all right let's see what happened here now that i let's pull my terminal back up You can do it right in VS Code, Erm says. Just press one button and view auto updating markdown preview next to the code. That's awesome. Yeah, I have something like that for D2 uh, where I can like do a key combo and it'll like render a SVG, uh, a D2 SVG. So that's really cool. Very handy. I love live preview kind of stuff. It's a very good user experience. All right, I'm going back to the CFG generator over here. I don't like looking at this Chrome window. I'm sorry. Here we go. Okay, let's go total overhaul. And I said I wanted to time box this. And effect arrows. So, I mean, this only shows up once. This code evidently does absolutely nothing. <laughs> this evidently does nothing. Um, I had this here. Let's see what we're doing. We're printing. Yeah. <laughs> Herdrack says, imagine if you start to fiddle with Zach's utils then. Stream's over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about this. That's some very interesting stuff in there. And uh, Erm and I actually have talked in the past about having like a kind of general Lua library for user interface stuff, but certainly there's like get a container or other general things that basically are wheels people would have to reinvent that could be useful to make a package for have as an interface or something in the API. I don't know. It's a thought. But and, until then, yeah, stuff like Zach's utils and other things that people cook up is going to be useful. Because uh, we don't want everybody reinventing the wheel badly, you know, potentially. I will say one example is how I had to crunch the weight of armor to figure out if it was light, medium, or heavy. I feel like there should be an abstraction for that, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am. Back to this. So here I'm just printing a plugin and thing. So the plugin dict is what it says it is. It's like a dictionary of keys and values. This is the key, which is the number. Oh my, what did I do? So this would be the number here for pursuit, 697. I got a sneeze coming on, excuse me. Been raining a lot. Stirring the pollen up. Okay, I think I'm okay. Uh, and it clearly works for these ones. Let's see. Area E. So this is interesting. It's just not in here. 
Urm says a lot of those should probably be done during dehard coding and available as built-in scripts to require or interfaces. Agreed, 100%. Yep, 100%. Just kind of an inconvenient spot right now for us, right, when, when we're kind of still developing the API. But I agree fully. Uh, this makes me so so I've realized now over here I'm printing out every plugin right I've determined that me filtering it out here doesn't work I'm printing every plugin to see what I'm going through and I'm not seeing area effect arrows in the output here it's just area e it's just not there so I must have another hack somewhere else Todd knows where <laughs> oh boy all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna Excuse me. Excuse me. All right, we're going to pull out the nuclear bomb here. And just see, because I have to have something hard-coded somewhere else. Oh, yeah, this reminds me. Um, load order, that's another thing we got to take care of. Maybe we'll do that today. Um... I feel like that's boring to do on the stream. Hmm. This is not what I was expecting to see, which is no hacks. Here we have just a commented out thing of what we were just looking at. My my puts debugging. This is just the definition of the load order. And then this is just a mention of it in other mod information. And this is random stuff from me trying to figure out load order. So there probably isn't actually a hack. I'm a little confused. Hmm. All right, I'm going to do this. Yeah, okay, I already have that up here. If I remember correctly from when I did this before, it was commented. So obviously I did it before. If I remember correctly, it's in the big batch of data I'm getting, and we're about to put the lid on the time box here. All right. I don't know if you noticed that giant blob area effect. Yeah, here it is. So it's in the blob of data that I'm giving here and splitting up. It's right here. Oh, you can't really see that, can you? Whoops. There it is, right here. The blob hurts my eyes. Gonzo says, me too, man. Me too. It's painful. This is what we've resorted to. <laughs> it's come to this. Um, and it's this is unfortunately necessary because, yeah, the code here is just so terrible. Soon. We'll make it right. We will make it right. And that's why I want to time box it because this may end up be just being something that I have to fix. All right. I wonder. Oh, right. I can't just straight up remove all of plugins naturalized because this is why this one's spicy. And maybe maybe the fix here is to split Bethesda plugins naturalized into separate mod listings. So right now it is one mod that provides six plugins, maybe. And so we can't just say exclude this mod, you know, because we want some of the plugins. And so hence the fiddling right here, hence the need for a hack right here. A proper way of handling it would be to have a better data definition for the plugin itself. Um, which as a reminder is just some crappy YAML data, you know, and maybe we could say, this is pseudocode, but maybe it could be something like this. And then we wouldn't need hex anymore, right? In the CFG generator, we wouldn't need to do hideous things. So, all right, well, I'm calling defeat on here, but I am gonna, we're gonna figure this out this weekend um, and we'll put a bow on 5.7, but yeah, I'm just not gonna put any more time on the stream to it. Sadly, we looked at it. Um, yeah, Caldera prior boss issue. I don't really think there is anything. So moving moving on, 
I don't think there's anything we can really do here on the stream. I'm, I don't wish to display any spoilers, and I certainly want to try and play the mod, but um, I'm not going to be able to do that, you know, soon. So I'll try to find somebody who has played it, or maybe if one of y'all gets around to uh, playing it, definitely let me know if there's some kind of a bug. Um, I don't remember the details. I have to go check on Discord, um, to be clear, but yeah, maybe an issue. We'll see. This thing, okay, yeah. So, I'm not going to nerf it. Um, because I feel like if you don't want to exploit something like this, then just don't. You know, there's lots of other game for you to see. And maybe somebody wants to, you know, whatever. So, moving on. But it was interesting to note that, um, and it kind of goes with the territory of Averus Legacy, I feel like. If you don't want that kind of stuff, then you probably shouldn't just use Averus Legacy. You'll be patching all day. All right. Um, we looked at this one. That one's getting added. Um, geez. Well, I'm going to skip this one for now, I feel like, because I'm not really an Arch Linux user. And I want to make sure I write the correct thing. So I'll probably reach out to Settiness on the side and uh, work with him on that. Well, let's go to the GitLab issues then. Right. A few people have hit this, and I wonder. Ah, Herdrak says, regarding Priory, Seeloff has been updating it frequent frequently. Depending on when they mention this issue with you, there's this here for 1.1. Made the Skeleton King much more powerful with more health and resistances and immunities. Okay. Yeah, that is so. Let's see here. That could be it. Let's see here. I'm just going to take a quick look here. Okay, so yeah. Spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear anything about the boss for Caldera Priory, maybe just mute me for like 30 seconds or look away or something and go get a coffee. Or a uh, other warm beverage. Uh, it says, when the final boss dies, his taunts keep repeating over and over, and quest progression doesn't activate. I feel like there's some script, probably, that fails in some way. Probably in OpenMW that it doesn't in vanilla. Um, yeah, so wait. All right, well, hey, let's let's do this. Let's open it up in OpenMWCS and run the verify tool and see if there's a if there's an obvious script error, it'll pop up there. But uh, I, somehow I doubt that that's the case. But you know, let's just try it. Okie doke. Just making sure that my thing is okay. Good, good. Uh, huh? Oh, Tamriel data. Okay, okay. Fair enough. I done goofed. Get that one and that one. All right. Let's try it again. All right, and so yeah, uh, anybody can do this at home, kids. Uh, just fire up the OpenMWCS, put your plugin in there, and then under File, you select Verify, and it crunches a little bit. And it can be kind of tough, because there's a bunch of, believe it or not, vanilla Morrowind content with a bunch of errors. So it can be kind of hard to suss out what's from your mod. I mean, like, there's a lot. 
and not uh, you know barely any of this is probably if any of it is from caldera priory but so what we're going to do is we're going to sort it by type yeah already is okay and we want to just look at scripts and sometimes modders will helpfully prefix their scripts with like a mod name prefix or something so let's just see here if we got some obvious scripts that belong to caldera priory Mm -hmm. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Let's look at the scripts that are added here. Okay, yeah, see right here, SLF, CEP. That's what you want to do. SLF, CP, Skeleton King. Thank you, Herdrax. I think the script you're looking for, SLF, CP, Skeleton King script. Uh, Ifane says you can deactivate the vanilla errors warnings in the settings. Oh, okay. I never knew that. Huh. Let's see here in the CS settings. I assume you mean, so let's just take a quick detour to look at that preferences, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, looking at the wrong thing here. Um, reports. Yes. Ignore base records in verifier. Awesome. That's really handy. Okay. Let's try it again now. There we go. Nice. Thank you so much for that, Afane. I did not know about that. Ah, so there you go. That's something we should cover for sure, Gonzo, um, in our little CS tips guide. You know, I mean, I've been using this verify function for years, and I had no idea about that. <laughs> wow. All right. Props, Afane. I really appreciate that. Good call out. So here we go, though. These are just warnings. Highly doubt. Yeah, and, the, and also not the script that you uh, pointed out, Urjax. Probably the correct script for the boss. And I think a likely suspect if there was some script error, but clearly there's no script error here on that one. So it's hard to say. I'm somewhat tempted to, uh, outside the stream, of course, script up the way to cheat myself to the end of that one and see, you know, if I can just spawn the boss in or kill it or whatever. Um... Herdrak says, I'm out of my league, but his on-death part of the script seems kosher. Yeah, yeah, so if there was an obvious really bad problem, like they, they just did something straight up wrong, you know, like, just as a bad example, um, you know, I could be like, let me get the script over where you can see it. I could be like, um, um, disable, well, we have now, I just typed erm. With a hyphen disable, you know, first off, erm is not in the game. Hyphen disable does nothing. And you can see down here, error, unexpected name. And if I click on it, it even takes me right to that line. So the script, right? I'm, I don't know if Seeloff used OpenMWCS, but like, you know, if there was a problem, we would find it here. Erm says, what's the issue exactly? The script might be correct syntax wise, but still buggy. Could be the case. So, um, Erm says also extra argument warning is a decent indicator of the script not doing what the author thought would. Okay, interesting. That's uh yeah, doing doing what he thought it would. That's good feedback. Um so the exact issue is a certain boss is dying. Uh his sound he has like a death sound or whatever is replaying it says here the final boss when the final boss dies, his taunts keep repeating over and over and the quest project progression doesn't activate so probably a journal index update doesn't fire you know probably some loop in the script doesn't work right so okay well we would take a look at that script then um and i'll go ahead and delete my nonsense here and uh, let's see here cp skeleton king let's just take a good look that's a good call out erm you're right Something innocuous could be problematic. Um, so first off, this script has no warnings. Maybe we should look at this one that does have the warnings. Uh, CP dist worlds. Probably lots of spoilers here. <laughs> Stray explicit reference. Yeah, you know what? Um, I've noticed this in a couple of mods actually where they do um, 
play sound just at like uh, with a explicit reference, and it seems to work. This right here, I guess, is what it doesn't like. Thirty one, yeah, on on the player. Is that right? What's wrong with that? Seems fine to me. I guess depending on the context of the script, what it's attached to, maybe. Thirty one extra argument though. Um, hmm, very interesting. So if we pull up the handy dandy ancient MW script reference page, and we look here at a uh, place, uh, what is this place sound? I'll move it over so y'all can see it. Play sound 3D. Okay, yeah, okay. I think maybe you're right for this stuff to be valid. Oh, and if you read this text here, major spoiler alert, by the way, whoops. This looks like some, this looks like it could be the culprit. And if we go back to the ancient MW script reference, we're going to play sound... Play sound 3D. So play sound does not take the arguments, actually. If it's just a warning, I wouldn't expect it to break anything, though, right? It would just do nothing with the extra 1.0. 3D VP. Volume pitch. Okay. Oh, yeah, For that's the extra arg. Okay, so yeah, this is not doing quite what they expect to do. Probably needs to be... to actually be correct. Um, and I'm wondering if it doesn't just work fine on Morrowind.exe. You know, um, but this is, you know, the documentation from back in the day. Poodle Sandwich referred this me to this, and I've actually used this a ton in my recent expeditions into MW script and it's super it's accurate and it's super useful and um could the issue be caused by the player not having the mace in their inventory excellent question i'm going to write that in my notes and uh that's a question we're asking based on this check needing to happen right like they're explicitly looking here in the script if the player's holding this item now theoretically if they didn't it would fall through to this and question state would be zero and and then they'll be like in this loop until they activate this thing Could be some kind of a control flow bug, honestly, right? That's what it feels like, because there's some weird control flow going on. I mean, I don't want to say weird, but it's just looking at the code here. It's not obvious to me what exactly is happening. We can sort of infer it, though. But otherwise, uh, looking back at the specific script on the Skeleton King, not really much going on here. S key death. Okay. Okay. No, maybe this is so interesting. The bug report says final boss dies, his taunts keep repeating, and the quest progression doesn't activate. Well, here we have a journal index happening. Here we have a death sound happening. Did they somehow get here? <sighs> hmm. Got to see it. Really got to see it happen. Because I feel like there would be something in the console, you know, F10. If you didn't know, you can hit recent builds of OpenMW. You can hit F10 and get the log in the game. This one right here, Erm says maybe that equals equals 30 is the problem. Right, that's exactly what I thought when I looked at this. Like, they're checking this specific quest stage right here. Right, exactly. Erm says do states between 30 and 40 exist? Right, exactly. Um, because maybe it wants to be like greater than or equal to thirty, and that can make all the world a difference. It's hard to say. Goes from thirty to forty. Herdrax, thank you. Great feedback. That's great feedback. Technically, should not be a problem. 
maybe it's possible to kill him before 30. Yeah, well, yeah. So then if that's the case, then somehow maybe elsewhere these things, uh, the sound. So maybe there's another place in the mod where the sound is playing or maybe there's another part of the mod which plays the death sound some other way. I um, wonder if we can... I haven't done this in a while. Let's do global search. Oh my god, I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh... Oh wait. Cool. Yeah, that is actually the only mention of playing that sound explicitly. For what that's worth. So. It's a bit of a bummer. I think that's going to have to remain a mystery for today. Um, but we did have a pretty good look at this. And it seems like there isn't a lot going on here. But that doesn't necessarily leave out any room for a problem. And I think this is the suspect area right here potentially. This seems to not be working as intended. As intended, get health less than or equal to one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so wait, no. If you do, if you do set health one, I've noticed that it kills things. So maybe this is some Morrowindism. For example, let's see here. Oh my! All right, that's fine. I'll just open another window up. We'll cook my potato here, no problem. Just do a little bit of seppuku here in the name of science. So I can do. Huh? Oh, wait. <sighs> well. Wow. Not sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Hmm. What is the what is the function I'm looking for? Mod health? Okay, that bumps it. Okay. Okay then. Hmm. Yeah, it feels a little feels a little suspect here having the health be less than or equal to 1. But then I guess we have the additional guard here on death. Which, if we can consult the ancient MW script reference once more, on death, we look at on death. Ah, uh, if on death equals one. Ah, uh, wait a minute. I mean, could this be the problem right here? And maybe. Uh, okay, Herdrax, if you're feeling daring and want to COC there, the cell is Sanctuary of Bone, World Stone Chamber. Well, I'm very tempted. And I'm and I'm looking here at the ancient MW script reference, and it clearly says returns one for one frame when the actor is killed, zero otherwise. Now, it's very possible that even OpenMW behaves such that this is effectively a, like a boolean test and if it's zero it's false and and the if doesn't go in here and if it's one it's true and it does but it could also be the case that it need you know because this is kind of like a, a special thing it's not even really like a variable like a function call um 
it just exists, right? And this just says, oh, yeah, we got this function. We can call it, you know. So maybe this is not producing the intended result in OpenMW. Maybe it works fine in Morrowind.exe. It could be the case very well. Be the, could very well be the case. All right, well, Skeleton King script on death. My money's on this being the problem. Let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. I don't mind spoiling the, the mod for myself here. Sanctuary of Bone Wolves. If you do care about spoilers, I would tune out maybe for a little bit, and I apologize. We're doing this. And I don't know. First off, we're going to try to do this. I don't know. You know, I'm writing my own quest mod, and it's heavily scripted. And you can't simply COC into a dungeon, for example, and get the intended effect. There's journal indexes that need to be set, scripts, and so forth. So it could very well be um, that just simply going there is going to do nothing. And also, I didn't actually COC to where I wanted to. You'll note that this is not what I typed in. So let's try this again. Oh my. Awesome. <laughs> we need to make it brighter though. Hideously bright. All right, ooh. Wow, I love this. Not that I expected anything left from less from Seelof. Diablo vibes, Hudrek said. Yeah, right, totally. This is like Daedric, Diablo, Marriage of evil. Give myself a, a reasonable speed here. Yeah, so I don't know if anything's actually going to be able to happen here, but... Man, yeah, it does give me... The piles of bones. Just, yeah. Caldera Priory is a major nod to the Diablo ethos, Herdrak says. Absolutely, wow, this is like... Serious vibes. Diablo 2 takes me back. So I don't know. I was just saying, though, I don't know if simply being here is going to be enough. And also, I've never been here, so I don't know. Ah, this looks like our guy, huh? All right. All right. So I guess we're doing this, as my man Raul says, from New Vegas. Okay. Now that's cool. <laughs> I love that. TGM for Nerevar's sake. Oh yeah, <laughs> good call. <laughs> oh, I love the little guy dragging the axe. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh man, what's happening here? Oh wait, there we go. Oh man, that was a good call out, Hudrax. I was about to get crushed by this guy. Oh, and did. What happened? All right, hang on, hang on. Oh, wait, here we go. Ooh, world space. All right, we can go back in there and I won't god mode out this time. Whoops. <laughs> ah, what the hey? All right, I'm gonna have to leave that for now, but I'm gonna come back to that at some point. Coco. All right. Gotta play this mod, holy smokes. Oh, fun. Here we go. It ends wow, okay. Uh, 
Herdrag says, this mod is hands down one of the crown jewels of 6.x. No doubt. No doubt. I basically love everything I've seen by Seelof. Excellent design sense. Here we go. We're about to kill him. This guy just wants attention. Okay. So, I feel like this is not a good test, though. Because there could be quest journal dependencies. I mean, we saw it in the... Okay, we saw it in the script, actually. So, let's try this again, actually. But I'm going to set the journal index to 30 before we get there. Uh, Herdrak says, We have everything from Seeloth in TO other than a walk in the park, Mournhold, Temple, Courtyard, Overhaul. Hey! I mean, I should look at that one. <laughs> um, I don't think it would go with Random Pals, Mournhold, uh, Overhaul. If that's even the right name of it, I can't think of it off the top of my head. But the one we're using, I feel like it would conflict with that. But uh, nothing uh, some TS3 command deletions couldn't fix. All right, so let's go back in there. I'm going to set the journal index to what? Uh, this one to 30. Okay, boom. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Learn to use my own script. Let's try this again. And yeah, Herdrax definitely will be looking at that one, though, because, I mean, you know, Seelof's other works are art. Clearly. All right, let's, um... Excuse me, 30. It was supposed to be 30, right? I just looked at it. 30, yep. Okay. There we go. We just played the whole mod, folks. Congratulations. Let's make it light so we can see. Turn on the AI. Turn on the clipping. Collision. Turn on the lights. Come on. There we go. All right. This would go along well with that Necromancer. Did I? I don't think I talked to y'all about that. There's a Necromancer mod out there for OpenMW uh, that will be coming to 6.x. Um, and I like just goes along. Necromancer was my guy in Diablo 2, also Diablo 3. So, yeah, I'm just feeling Necromancer here. Like, I want to raise some skeletons. Where's my blood golem? Uh, and if I remember, we'll look at that Necromancer mod before the end of the stream. Herdrak says, good news that it's only about some plant clipping, which is easy to solve. So immersive mournhold and a walk in the park could end up meshing well. Awesome. And plant clipping is nothing that we can't easily fix by moving something in the CS. And, uh, you know, some modders are amenable to, uh, for example, random pal renaming that wheel so that I could patch it easily on my list. You know I mean? That kind of collaboration is what makes the community freaking awesome. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I just noticed the music. Cool. I wanted to have my own music in my mod too, but it seems like a tall order. <laughs> Scope is just creeping up. All right, here we go. Did I turn on AI? Yes, I did. I love this guy carrying the giant mace. That's amazing. Did I mention Scope Creep? Yeah. <laughs> it's my middle name, bro. All right. And actually, um, while I'm here, I just want to, the thing I originally was talking about, if you hit F10, boom, contents of the OpenMW log file are now right here in game. You can select it. You can copy paste it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. So these do come up right here. Uh, we did get the audio. So I guess this is just a stupid Todd ism um certainly though the extra argument is not doing what they think it's doing obviously 0 0.49 rules yeah certainly does her drax it certainly does and props to all the folks that worked on it um yeah uh, including erm you know mad props thank you for what you do all right let's kill this guy shall we gotta love todd mode i mean god mode Wow, 
Well, uh, I don't know about you folks. Seems like it worked. Yeah, it seems like it worked. Well, nonetheless, you know, this isn't kind of an apples to oranges test because this person was testing it with the, um, <laughs> Todd QD. <Cutie. laughs> this is, uh, this is an, it's a bit of an apples to orange test because they were using the Wabajack, which is effectively all of total, total overhaul 5.6. And uh, and here we just have a very minimal setup, right, with nothing extra. So it's not the best test. So what do we do? Let's try it with total overhaul. Let's do it. Now we got a pretty good repo recipe, right? We know, you know, the index we need to set and, and all that. So I think I think we can do this. By the way, speaking of 0.49, I'm a slow poke here, but that water ripple, am I right? I actually found that by accident while I was playing. I didn't know it got added because I'm like living under a rock apparently. And then I'm like, oh, whoa, there's a water ripple. Ooh. <laughs> you want to talk about, you know, pleasant discoveries. Um, That was great. I'm like laying in bed playing on my Steam Deck like. <laughs> my wife's wondering what I'm so happy about. And then I showed her the water and she got happy too. <laughs> All right, here we go. This will hopefully be a closer approximation to what the person was seeing um, in OK High's Discord who reported it. And if we can't break it here, then I'm just going to kind of go back to him and say, e, I don't know, that must have been uh, Gremlins. OK, we totally just played the whole mod. Look at us. OK, oh, we need to make it brighter, too. For the love of Todd. Just replacing God with Todd. I don't see any problems. Oh, yeah. Mm. There we go. Really should just update my script. That's what I get for being lazy. All right, here we go. Round four, I guess. <laughs> this never gets old. I love this guy. Great touch. Stuff like this, you know. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Here we go. By the way, you might note my combat animations. Looks like it worked, fellas. Yeah. Smooth. Um, yeah, you'll note my combat animations, by the way. And that's uh, props to Johannes out in Discord, who suggested this. We'll look at that in a moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, this also not exactly the best test because we didn't technically play the mod. This person clearly hit some unanticipated condition, though, right? Where where they got here and, and it was not set up right. Or, or the sound fired and there was a bait, you know, a bug, something. I will note that OK High is uh, using 0 0.49 for his Wabajack, for their Wabajack. And so, you know, maybe they got a bunk build. It's possible. In any case, I think we looked at this uh, pretty closely. And I think we have ruled out a, a specific bug in the mod. There's clearly no like real bug but we couldn't know 100% for sure unless we played the mod actually in the game we cheated ourselves to the end here which is a reasonably good approximation but it's not one to one right we're still apples to oranges so nonetheless I feel confident in going back to this user and saying hey you know uh I couldn't make it happen but I kind of cheated my way to the end Gonzo says I really want to finish this quest now stunned I know right me too wow I just need to like you know, take a Morrowind vacation. But as I told Herdrax, I am uh, I'm waiting on Patch for Purus update to come out. You know, before I really like buckle down for a for real playthrough. Um, that long anticipated update. We've seen Half Eleven. You know, somewhat active recently. So I have hopes that maybe that uh, will come out soon. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this is a great look at this mod. Uh, props to Seeloth. I am a huge fan. Seeloth. I am a huge fan of their work. This mod is brilliant. I can tell already, and I don't even mind that I spoiled it for myself. It just makes me want to play it even more, honestly. So, going to discard this change. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and say there's no there's no bug in this mod um, that I could find. Now, maybe there's a progression bug. Or maybe there was a bug in the specific build of OpenMW they were using. Hard to say. Hard to say. Okay, I'm marking that one checked. Um, but yeah, I think we took a good look at that, and uh, there was nothing obviously wrong there. So something else is afoot, clearly. Okay. Um, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey. So let's look at this uh, animations, combat animations, shall we? This one, Modern Combat for OpenMW. Uh, I rather like it. It's pretty good. This is going to be a 6.x edition. And uh, souls like stamina, lock in place, always hit fast stagger. Um, oh, no, 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 this isn't it. This is a completely different mod. <laughs> I'm like, wait, that's not what the mod I'm looking at does. No, this is something completely different. Reanimation. There we go. Modern combat, though, let me tell you, looks pretty awesome. Here we go. Reanimations. Modern combat looks awesome. I never got around to trying it. It's one of those extremely ambitious Lua mods that I didn't think could reasonably exist, but does. Um, someday we ought to take a look at it. But it's very not compatible with uh, natural character growth and decay. I don't I don't think it is. It might be with my Lua one. I don't know. Actually, it should be with my Lua one, but with the Morrowind script one, first off, it doesn't work with 0 0.48 at all. I see people complaining about it um, on Sothis Combat Pack. And yeah, I mean, if you're using this version of NCGD with OpenMW 47 or 48, you're just doing it wrong. It's not compatible. It's broken. This would be the original version. This one has been broken since 0 0.46. I maintained a fixed version for a couple of years until it was ultimately had a fork stuck in it and we had to rewrite it with Lua. So anyways, the end. This one, though. Uh, so big thanks to Johannes out in Discord land and uh, Nexus land for pointing me to this one. Pretty easy to use. Just drop in purely asset replacer. <laughs> Uh, purely an asset replacer, you just drop in some files, takes advantage of OpenMW's ability to read animation files. And yeah, you get a really nice, you know, it's it's better to see it in game, but you get a really nice effect. We'll jump in game here and take a quick look at what I mean. But uh, it makes the, you know, it makes the animation seem, you know, kind of less. Because I think that's one of the th most valid lingering complaints with Morrowind is the animations are just like they were made 20 years ago because they were. Okay. Right away, you can probably notice the stance is slightly different. And if I draw back, and it's uh, you know it's pretty good. Um, and I understand that there's a magical animations that accompanies this, and I would like to try it. I you know I took a look at it before, and I just wasn't. It didn't get added, so maybe at the time I really just wasn't feeling it. Um, but after, you know, after seeing this one, I kind of feel like maybe it needs another look. Because um, the spell animations, they're not bad by any means. You know, I think that's a good personal effect animation. But, uh, I don't know, maybe we can do better, you know. Maybe we can do better than 20 years ago. So if you don't have this one, 
definitely go check it out. We animations first person animation pack, and yeah, M car animations. This is the one. Replaces first person animations. Okay, yeah. So this is a. This one is a, a direct hack to the single animation file that Morrowind uses, or I think it has like a one or a small amount of animation files and all the animations are compressed into one or small amount of files. OpenMW changes that and lets you have separate files. Let's take a look at this. I already really like that. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure how I feel about the Dragon Ball Z thing. I don't know. Like, I feel like just doing this, the vanilla animation for fire is okay. I think something like this, though, we really got to play with to realize if we love it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. What are we, Duke Nukem in here? That's pretty funny. <laughs> I want that one. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, Gonzo, I'm with you. Gonzo says, hmm, I kind of like it. You know, I'm with you. I kind of like it too. Um, flipping off the ordinators. I hope that's included. Let's just take a look at this right now. Why not? Why not? And I'm certainly curious how, in terms of like uh, loading alongside other things, how does that work, you know? Um, let's bring that alongside in here. Plus swim. Hmm. We're going to skip the plus swim for now. Uh, the only spell you need in life, says Afane. Yeah, right? Like, just piss off. <laughs> just curious. Johnny Herdrak says, did you get around to... Did you get around that asset moving mod from last week? That one looks very promising. Are you talking about um, Ashlander Architect? The one by Zach Has a Cat? Let me know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Herdrak says. No, I did not. It is on my to-do list. Um, and, you know, we could take a look at it once we're done doing this if you want. Um, I believe it was an issue on my end. I was missing something. There you go. Thank you for the link, my man. I appreciate that. Much appreciated. We will be taking a look. I want to see this magical animation, but yeah, let's uh, jump into that after this. Okay, melee comment. So I feel like maybe this one. Remaking some of the animations from scratch, altering vanilla ones, or using an adjusting M car. Okay. So it's a heavily inspired by this M car. We're going to just do the magic casting one, though. That's what I'm most interested in because I want to keep these ones for combat. Um, and I don't want any other. I want simply walking for walking. You know, I don't want the, the janky vanilla sidestep as my favorite animation in any video game. And to be clear, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Do we have it? Yeah, we do. Herdrak says, to be honest, if you have time on the stream or maybe tomorrow, I'd love to see you fiddle with Zach's utils. <laughs> Tool in my hands will do some serious damage. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know what? Um, the st <laughs> We will look at that tomorrow. Because I forgot to mention as I was going through our list that tomorrow I want to begin officially planning for 6.x. And that means looking at my setup, seeing what I have, figuring out what we're going to add, playing through stuff here. It's going to be kind of a chill kind of just looking at stuff. But yeah, tomorrow we're beginning that. So um, it would be a good time to, to introduce Zach Utils. Um, I got some family coming over later tonight, so I'm not going to have a ton of time for Morrowind, but I will work uh, – some time into my day and, and get that set up some prepared. But a uh, good call out, Hudrax. Really appreciate that. Um, we'll have that ready for tomorrow. Gonzo says the statue-esque jumping animation. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Let's take a look at that right now. Uh, <laughs> I, For whatever reason, I had forgotten about the... First off, the sideways walking animation. I had forgotten about that until I was playing some TES3MP with some people. And I noticed them walking sideways, playing with Muff. And, and Daniil Baturin, my buddy who makes Sipo, and he made Fargoth's Mountain Hut and a few other mods, Persistent Corpse Disposal. And they're running around, and I'm like, why are they jumping? Like, 
That's hilarious, you know. Sony was like this one. No, wait, wait. I have the, I have the anim animation mod loaded. What is wrong with me? Simply walking. Simply. No, I don't. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back in there. Anyways, I just remember, <laughs> I just remember uh, seeing the animation and being like, "Is it really that bad?" You know, because you don't. Before OpenMW fixed the camera, you wouldn't play Morrow in third person. Why would you? It's terrible. The animations are terrible. Now you reasonably might do that because it looks good. I play third person except for in combat. De facto, you know. Um, but back then, you know, the animations are so terrible. It's like, why would you even do that? And yeah, so I had not been used to seeing it. And uh, yeah, what's going on here? This is the good animation. Must be loading something that I don't know about. Okay. All right. Anyway, so uh, what I want to do, though, back on track. I'm the. I'm sorry. I'm the worst at getting distracted. Sometimes. Let's put this in here. And actually, let's have a little experiment in how these play together. And so you'll note, single file, and these guys, okay, has this uh, interesting setup here where we're putting files in a folder that is named sort of like the one from the other one. Implementation detail of the animation system that I'm really not aware of, but I believe that lets you separate the things out into more than one file. So with that, let's get in the game. Let's cast a spell. Let's see how it looks. Excuse me. And I think the day is fast approaching when we'll have Lua spellcasting mods. Well, I can tell already hands kind of have a different position, right? Uh, not gonna lie. I kind of love that. How about this? Oh! <laughs> so, strictly first-person animations doesn't change anything in third-person. If you play in third person, but you're using my action camera swap mod, shouldn't be a problem. Gonzo says, wow, that looks great. I mean, frankly, I agree. I feel kind of silly for sitting on this one, because these animations are really great. Um, feels like a really, you know natural fit for, for what we're doing here, especially this fireball one. Just the more I do it, I'm kind of, yeah, kind of loving it. <laughs> Feel like Goku a little bit. Well, you know, I don't know about you folks. I'm pretty sold on this. I like this a lot. Um, This is going on the 6.x candidate list. The velocity of the animation really gives it the feeling like you're pulling magic out of the ether. Yeah, Gonzo. Thank you. Well put. It's That's right. Like, that's a casting animation, you know? Or even like the, even the, this one, right? Like, yeah, shh, you know, just gives you that feel. Um, well done. Very well done. Um, who's the fellow that put this one together here? Ah, SVNR, of course. This is the same individual that brought us uh, Imperial Towns revamped, Caverns revamped, some of the most beautiful, uh, the incomplete Daedric Ruin interiors revamped, but I mean some of the most beautiful Morrowind aesthetics that we have available, including this. So, I mean, mad props, you know, just mad props. Now I wonder, though, this swimming animation... I am curious. 
do we need to replace that? I feel like that's probably covered by simply walking, which I seem to be using here, but can't explain how. <laughs> All right, we'll go down a little bit. That way we don't look like we're convulsing while we're swimming. Okay, yeah, here we go. Now we got the... I swear I thought there was like a sideways run that was hilarious, but he's not doing it now. But I do have this silly looking vanilla run here where he does this. <laughs> All right, let's get in the water. Ah, uh, ripple. So nice. All right, getting distracted. Okay, so... This is our swimming animation. Tom Cruise run, yeah. <laughs> Gonzo says, Tom Cruise run, yeah, absolutely, wow. So, okay, um... It's a pretty vanilla looking swim, I think, you know, and plus this little s sitting here animation. Maybe we can do better. I have faith in SVNR's work. Let's try it. Tom Cruise run. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so we probably have to... This one, we probably won't be able to piecemeal in, unfortunately. Somebody who knows what they're doing might be able to, you know, perform surgery on the file in the way that uh, the reanimation one was created. But yeah, this one is going to be a bit more of a hard replacement for simply walking. And I don't know if I'm going to be down for that, but let's check it out. All right, strictly an asset replacer should be all we need. Close that up and run and run the game again. All right. So maybe this would play well with. See, this actually looks like a swimming animation. <laughs> this looks a bit better, I would say. Kind of the same. I'm just floating here as far as I can tell. All right. You know what? I don't know why I turned the AI on. What was I thinking? I was thinking I wanted to have a slaughterfish party. Evidently. Now. Oh, okay, wow, got this, like, turning. I don't think Vanilla has this, right? Where if I turn while I'm swimming forward, he's kind of, like, leaning. Oh, okay. Look at that. I don't think I don't think the Vanilla animation has that. And pardon my drowning here. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know about you folks. I kind of like this swimming animation a lot more, uh, obviously, than the Vanilla one. The question is... Does simply walking provide a swimming animation? If not, does simply walking mesh well with this one? I'm kind of thinking probably not because of how they're implemented. But let's just take a look. And if we look at simply walking... Yeah, yeah, so we got the raw implementations of the high level. Yeah, so this absolutely will conflict. Yeah, it just straight up overwrites. They cannot coexist together. So what would need to happen, my little caveman understanding here, bear with me, is this kind of approach would need to be taken where we have an xbase anim.first folder and we can, you know, the engine can apply different animations separately instead of all as one file. So unfortunately, we cannot use... Um, and I also wonder, too, if then this is going to be incompatible with Simply Walking. Because, yeah, we're replacing that. Ew, ew. So I think it's going to be a matter of you have Magic Casting or Simply Walking and not both. Is unfortunately how it's going to be. So 
If I have to... If I have to pick... You know, I think I want Simply Walking. So again, I could be, you know, uh, lacking a totally sophisticated, full understanding of how animations are implemented, but yeah, as I understand it, you know, I mean, we're... Each of these mods are providing the same file. So... If we say, for example, we put simply walking right here underneath MCAR and we run the validator tool. It's going to yell at us because we have replaced paths. Meaning, and what this means is that these two paths are simply not being used in our configuration. And, uh, you know, we can look up here to kind of... Yeah, you can see it right here. We get some actual information about what was here we go yeah so you can you can see right here we're loading mcar but then it's all getting replaced when we load simply walking because they're all implemented by implementing just this file so yeah, the approach to get around that, which is not, I think, widely known totally in the modding community because Morrowind.exe does not yet support this, maybe. Um, so it's not really a widely known thing. But yeah, you can do that and have like just the just the attack animations go in alongside, you know, a different implementation of the walking animations, for example. So a little bit outside of my wheelhouse, though. You know, I know nothing about implementing animations, though. So maybe we'll get a hero that we need. Uh... Who can do this? Who's our animation hero? Now, please bear with me. It's time to sit. It's that time of the day where we lower my desk and sit down. Please pardon me. Talk amongst yourselves. Animation mods. What's better, that casting or simply walking? I feel like the walking is just, it's got to have the walking, but I don't know. I'm curious. What do you think? Gonzo says, I wish there could be a happy marriage between the two somehow. Well, there could be. It just requires re-implementing them, you know, in a way that I'm not really sure exactly how to do. Somebody who knows how to create these .kf files would basically have to somehow, you know, cut them out. So Gonzo says, I only play in first person, though, so I know what's going in my setup. Hey, oh, yeah, ab that's absolutely right. So if you only play in first person, you don't really care about the walking animation um, too much. Excuse me. Your NPCs are still going to walk like Tom Cruise or run like Tom Cruise. <laughs> um, but, you know, maybe in that case you can grab one of the more inclusive MCAR packages, you know, because, yeah, there's MCAR plus swim animation. Um, there's a couple different packs here, you know, so uh, you, you, may, you may be able to get the spell casting with a better walking animation too, you know, um, worth playing around with. In my copious free time, I would really love to, uh, you know, become an animation expert and fix that. But I think that's a patch I won't be doing anytime soon. So, oh, uh, Herjack says, all I know is that I'm still not sold that this blue thing in the back of Johnny's room isn't a Dwemer artifact. Yeah, well, okay, it's a piece of paper, actually. Yeah, and I will demystify this. Hold on. It's my exercise pamphlet. Just shows me stretches I should do every day. And yeah, <laughs> so Mysterious Dwemer Artifact on orthopedic exercises. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's too funny. I only had to go grab that because I remember you mentioned that before. <laughs> and yeah, it comes up. I'm, I see it in the feedback there, in the camera output there, and it does show up oddly blue and weird looking. So yeah. Oh, thank you. Cool lighting by that area, by the way. Yeah, you know what? Um, so right now I have the curtain drawn a little bit and I have the sun coming in, but that's not normally my MO. Normally I have like all the curtains closed and I keep it very dark in here, you know, and just... um. I started working, you know, behind a computer in tech on an overnight shift and just kind of got used to working at night and with the lights low and that kind of a thing. So, yeah, I keep the, the lighting atmospheric in here. So, yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah. I feel like someday maybe we could take a deep dive into animation. I wish there were more... Maybe I'm, this, maybe I'm just ignorant, but I wish there were more animation tooling, you know, for Morrowind. Uh, maybe... Greatness 7 has some blender tools. You know, maybe they can be used for this purpose. I saw Ferris fixed the impaling fishing rod or whatever by rotating it in Blender. So I feel like there's probably reasonably good support in Blender for Morrowind assets. I just don't really know anything about that. I use Blender to produce videos, but I know almost nothing about 3D modeling and uh, all that. So moving on. <sighs> <laughs> you outlanders okay um so trying to oh yeah this is another one here somebody brought this up there are some apparently some changes to the Vivek and Velothi Architectura mod that break the compatibility with Project Atlas. Uh, and I wanted to look into this because I'm actually, one of the changes in um, Total Overhaul 6.0 is that I'm going to recommend to people to, here it is. For whatever reason, we have Project Atlas Nexus page. Bear with me here, folks. For whatever, we have a Project Atlas Nexus page. Um, hasn't been updated for a little over a year. But we also have Project Atlas GitHub, which was updated much more recently. And includes some goodies that you all are going to want, including, for example, improved lights for all shaders patch. And so I'm wondering if this report isn't based on the contents of the now outdated Nexus offering. And I'm using the GitHub download on my local setup. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what's different between the two. Could be something. So anyways, let's just take a quick look here. One of the nice things about GitHub is we got a little fire file browser here. And so we want to look for Atlas Velothi. All right. Um, vanilla textures. No longer Atlas split into one and two. Okay. Yes. My instinct was correct. The new version of Project Atlas, the more up-to-date version, has the two file, and this would be also why I didn't notice the problem on my local, has the two file texture pattern here. So we have the Atlas split into two textures instead of just one on the newest version of Project Atlas. So it could be then that the GitHub version, or I'm sorry, the Nexus Mods version is just a little bit out of date, doesn't have the newest um, files here, but uh, you know, maybe perhaps Titty knew about these and in their uh, Art Architectura mod reworked it. So have to follow up with this user and let them know um, that that's the state of things. And again, in 6.x, we're gonna be referring users to GitHub. Um, which I'm always a little bit uh, about. I don't like sending people to GitHub. <laughs> Gonzo, man, has it already, really already been an hour and 45 minutes? Yeah, man, I know. It's like flying by, and I just thank you all for being here. This is having a good time here. 
looking at that Caldera Priory makes me just want to like close all my curtains and play, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I digress. Um, I don't love sending people to GitHub because if you're not a programmer and you come to this page, I mean, let's be real, you know, there's a lot going on here. And if you're not a programmer, what do you even download here, you know? So that's problematic. And so I think what I'm going to do is there should be a link somewhere here. Go to file. No. Oh, no, 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 no. What the? I think it's going to be, the answer is going to be to get this link. Which is a direct link to the zip file of the contents of the master branch, which is the latest build. Um, let's see if that gives us something sensible that people could reasonably use here. Um, but yeah, so I think that's what we'll do for people. I get cloned it myself, you know, um, cause I'm me, but your unsuspecting user of the mod list is going to need like a zip file and something, you know, they can give to their, to their workflow. Um, so yeah, we'll put the, explicit kind of like what I did for OMWFX shaders and I hope that's helpful to people um oh my goodness learn to type all right here we go click here to download the mod as a zip file yeah so so the page of OMWFX shaders is again I think the only thing worse than a GitHub repo is a GitLab repo. If you are not a programmer, it's just so much like overload. So many links. What do I click to get my thing, you know? And so to that end, I put this direct link here. Click link to download the mod as a zip file. We're going to do the same thing, I think, for this. Is We're just going to give people a link they can click to get the zip file. Done, Dundee. Um, but in, <laughs> since we're here on this one... Another problem that I noticed people had, and I don't really know how I can fix this, <laughs> but I've noticed that a good amount of people will set their data path. It's basically, so it's like this, so that the, the root of their data path is the shaders folder. And if you don't know about sort of the OpenMW VFS, which is understandable, Normal humans probably shouldn't know too much about it. You don't know that shaders needs to be, you know, inside the root of your data path. And so a lot of people I've seen, at least a handful, at least, who are putting this as their data path and then wondering why OMW effect shaders don't work. Um, I do say what the folder path should be down here. Um, but I'm wondering if there isn't a better way we could convey that to people so that this mistake isn't made repeatedly. Because, yeah, just our, our friend that was... Uh, had the flooded St. Delon. I don't know if you guys remember. Um, or, um, I forget their username, but uh, they hit this most recently. And I was like, ah, you know, I knew right away when they said that that didn't work. I knew right away that they probably did this. It's not a Orlum. Thank you so much, Herdrex. I appreciate that. I, I just knew right away that they had done this because it's an easy foot gun. You know, not everybody knows the, the guts of the, the VFS and that's fine. Um, so yeah, I wonder if there isn't some wording we could put here or something to help prevent people foot gun there. We don't have to do it right now, but just something keep in mind for y'all, you know, if there's something we can do to make that easier for people. Yeah. So, so I do wonder, yeah, this person probably is not aware, uh, what is the foot gun? Um, do you mean, uh, for, for OMWFX? Shaders, Gonzo? I'm sorry. Um, or do you just mean like in general? For MW? So the foot gun would be that some people are, uh, yeah, yeah. So the foot gun is that some people, you and I both know that the, the data path here is the folder containing the shaders folder. But I've seen more than a handful of people set this to the data path so that the data path includes shaders, which is not right. That'd be like putting textures in your data path, right? Like, wrong, wrong, wrong. So I'm, I'm just trying to think. This is one of those things, you know, of course, we know the right way to do it. So it's hard for us to imagine the mindset of somebody who doesn't. 
and how to you know properly convey it to them. Um, so just something that maybe we can think about, and and maybe there's nothing more we can say here, but maybe there is something that we can say here to to properly convey to people, you know, um, because it would be it certainly would be a shame if somebody, you know, uh, Arlem was fortunate enough to be part of our conversation in the Discord channel. I was able to see their comment, but how many people are at home not figuring it out and not reaching out and just not having God rays and, and ambient occlusion and missing out on all this stuff, you know? <laughs> That's a crime. We can't have that. What does the data path down below say? Gonzo, very good call out. It is correct. The data path is exactly what you would get, right? So if we look right here, I get cloned it. Um, what did I, did I download? No, I didn't download this one. But yeah, if you extract it, that's the exact folder you're going to get, you know, OMWFX shaders main, and it's going to contain what you need. Um, so Herdrak says, it may seem weird for experienced users, but I think some people, myself included in the beginning, are still struggling with the notion that the folders in VFS are all treated as if it was the original data folder. That's a great comment, Herdrex, and that is essentially all you need to know, right? When OpenMW starts, it folds all your data paths into one data files folder. Yep, data files. Well, to be fair, in the later games, it's just data. So <laughs> in Morrowind, it's data files. Oblivion and later, just data. But that's exactly right. You understand it perfectly. Um, there really isn't anything more to, to understand. We're into the Starwind soundtrack now. I just noticed my m music player kept going, um, and I hadn't unmuted it. But uh, yeah, so you have a great understanding. But it, you know, when you um, are just coming, let's say you're coming from, you know, you're a New Vegas player, and you typically are using Mod Organizer two, you know, and you're clicking buttons, and you're not really understanding the notion of like strategically dumping files into a data path. You know, um, it can be very confusing for sure. I think so. Um, yeah, I think that's the one that's the one thing that I I think somebody trying to get into modding OpenMW whether they're going to, you know, um yeah, CFG, thank you Gonzo, the CFG generator has the same data path. Yep. Yes, I mean the data path is right, you know, and I think it's just going back to what I was just about to say. I think the one thing I think people should really understand or try to understand getting into modding that would just help make everything so much easier is understanding that uh data path, you know. Um just a little bit of data path understanding excuse me, a little bit of knowledge about how that works can go a long way in, like, understanding issues like that, you know. And so I wonder if there isn't a way, and maybe it's not something we put immediately right here. Maybe this is, you know, maybe this is something that can go into the user's guide, right? Like, tips review, maybe not there, but, but maybe set up steps, you know, or maybe we need another bullet point here of, like, concepts you should know or something, right? Like concepts you should know and we can have sort of a, a, a you know a 5,000 foot explanation of load order data paths content files who drag says that's where manual installation is helping me much easier to truly understand how the whole things work exactly yeah you know um I can understand being put off by manual process but it really affords you the most understanding and the most control as insane as we are, it is nice to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Slower and a nice, uh, better, much better process in the long run, says Herdrex. And I agree, yeah. And and for me personally, if you're somebody like me, probably not many people actually doing this, but again, as I've shown in the past, I use Git to version control my configs. So when I make a change, I can look back here and I can say, all right, uh, let's see, total overhaul. And this is what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to be looking at this beast right here. But this right here is basically a readout of what I've changed in my config from 5.x to 6.x. Green stuff is additions, reddish orange stuff here is removals. When you move something around, that's a removal plus an addition, so it can be a little hard to read. But um, yeah, I mean, so you could probably make something like this work with Mod Organizer 2 or, you know, Rymesh or any other kind of mod manager software, port mod, but um, you know, I would think that you you would need to build that kind of 
thing into the software. You know, it would have to have some notion of version control here. And this is something I get for free just by using the manual process with Git. Um, it doesn't need to be Git, by the way. If you're not a programmer like me, you can use Dropbox, you can use Google Drive, you can use Microsoft OneDrive, you can use, if you are a programmer like me but you don't like Git, you can use Pujol or you can use uh, Mercurial or anything else. Subversion if you're old school or whatever. But this is powerful because it gives me insight into what I have changed. And I can look back at any time in the history and I can see, I can use a feature called Git Blame to see when a change on any line was made, who made it. I can read the notes alongside. This is why I always talk about commit messages. It's good to have a good message when you make a change. So that way, when you're wondering what the hell you did in the future, you can thank your past self rather than being mad at your past self. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we're kind of running out of time today, so I don't know how much we're going to dive into it, but I will run it and show you all. Um, I've been looking at using, thanks to a mention from Herdrax, props for calling this out, the waterworks options for beautiful cities of Morrowind are simply incredible, and we want to be using this, and it's going to be a change that's included in 6.x, and... There are some tweaks that are needed. Uh, canal plugin needs to be removed. Um, additional patching considerations for the Wolverine Hall, which we will go over. Um, but yeah, this is, since I'm kind of yakking here randomly and, and looking at what we got, this is just one of the, I think, coolest changes that we kind of got for free, that we had all along, we just weren't using. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and fire that up. And uh, yeah, uh, just, you know, props to the author of Balmora Waterworks and props as always to Random Pal for integrating this into the already beast of a mod that is Beautiful Cities of Morrowind. It's like, how much better can it get? Well, you're about to see. Balmora, Random Pal's vision of Balmora was just stellar as it, as it is. How can it get any better? You might be wondering. We will run, but not too fast. We aren't going to walk. Run, don't walk to see this stuff, I'm telling you. And probably by tomorrow, depending on how much I get done tonight, I will try to actually have my gaming PC over here. Herdrak says, anybody that uses, if they can, drop some love on the original Balmora Waterworks page. The author was nice enough to let Random Pal incorporate it fully into BCOM. Absolutely. Good call out, Herdrax. They deserve the recognition and love um, for this. Absolutely. All right. We'll go into the first person for this. And just, you know, um, so the merchants here are an optional add-on. Don't see why you wouldn't want that, but, oh, goodness, just fits really well here. Fits really well. And you can see here's the waterworks down there. There's, like, a whole area to the city now, like, underneath. Um, and we can go down there. We're going to go down there in just a minute. The merchants are so cool. Nice use of OAAB assets, TR assets all over. Just looking beautiful. That rug. Oh, man, I love that rug. Look at that. Uh, I got a rug just like that. <laughs> I love it. What? Gonzo says, yeah, right? I'm to I told you. This is the real deal. Look at all this. It just fits perfectly. It actually looks like a canal that's used for transporting, transporting well, anything, Gonzo says. That's right. It just fits. Like, you might be wondering, oh, how is this going to fit? It's already very cluttered here. Well, we're just jumping right in. I mean, you're seeing it right here. It fits. It works. And, yeah, you know, it's not only does it fit, not only does it work, it, like, is a waterworks. You know, if we're going to have a waterworks in Balmora, this is it, you know. It just couldn't be any more perfect, I feel like, you know. Um, just astonishing. Really good. So thank you again, Herdrax, for motivating me to check that out. Um, I am getting very close to putting a freeze on 6.x and stopping additions. 
I was very close to doing that before I found this one, so I'm really glad you called that out and we now have this. Uh, and I'm going to delay freezing it completely until we, after we do our little, you know, review. But yeah, yeah. Props, Sir Drax. I appreciate it, man. But yeah, this is just looking so good. And just like, wow, like here we are. Just this view from the water right here. Like, whoo, so much good stuff. Gonzo says, I wonder if Saran has one also. That's an excellent question. There is the whole Saran Underworld series of mods and all that stuff that I've kind of been putting off looking at because I'm a little cautious of like tacking on too much. You know, we're moving worlds over here. Um,. So we didn't really get a whole lot done on the actual code of the website today. I really got to nail this area effect arrows issue. There's something going on there. I got to really, you know, I got to dig deep and hack a grueling hack that's probably boring for the stream. That's Yeah, that's fair. Gonzalo says, yeah, you know what? Uh, I think before we put a, a freeze on 6.x, so it's worth examining that. Seeing what our options are. You know, maybe there's something in BCOM that I have missed. Or some plugin for BCOM that I've missed that can extend Saran in the area. I'm open to it, certainly. Now's the time to do it before we really, like, call it, you know, a plan. So, yeah, but as I was saying, we didn't really do uh, many changes to the site. So, I'm not going to really do a deploy, but I'm going to check that off just for the sake of having a higher than 50% achievement rate up here. <laughs> um, but I think that's going to do it for today. Um, uh, Herdrax, Temple Master, I think the... I think is the right addition to Saran. You know it, my man. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at this one because I agree. This looks amazing. Yeah, Gonzo says, White Saran is great, but it still feels as useless of a city as ever. So maybe you didn't see this one. This is one of the MD uh, releases of this past year that slipped by me as well. But in the true style of MD, it just looks freaking amazing. And yeah, you can take over the temple... This mod lets the player take control of the Saran Temple once they advance enough through the Tribunal Temple faction. Through a series of quests and with some choices to make along the way, you will get to improve the temple. Oh, wow, Gonzo says. Yeah, right? So this for sure got added, and I believe Herdrex called this one out. So again, props, man, for this one. Um, and this is another one. It's just like I got to get a for real playthrough going soon because this just looks incredible. So, so maybe this would be enough to jazz up Saran and make it an interesting place. Uh, <laughs> her tracks <laughs> keep it going I say we're not frozen yet um, conflicts with Moro and Rebirth oh, okay usually I just say not compatible with Rebirth without even checking but uh, maybe MD actually knows that yeah really cool <laughs> alright well jeez uh, yeah this is just this is a heck of a there's gonna be so much new quest content coming up. I mean, it's I'm super stoked between this, the Twin Lamps, Vampire Quests. I barely talked to anybody about some of these, you know, so we're going to look at them hopefully tomorrow and going on. Um, so my plan going forward tomorrow is we're going to go, what we're going to do is I'm going to have my, hopefully have my gaming PC set up here. And we're going to look at, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at this screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if something got added we're going to look at it. We'll go in the game, look at it, you know, kind of get a feel for it. If something got removed, we'll maybe we'll talk about why it got removed. Um, and if it's like something really worth seeing, you know, like, uh, for example, remove negative lights for OpenMW, which is a Lua script that will dynamically remove negative lights. Um, you know, um, we can we can talk about that. Gonzo says, do you want to put a bow on 5.7 after the area of effect arrows thing? So two things, good question, great call out, Gonzo, thank you. There's two things I want to happen for 5.7. Number one, the area of effect arrows. And number two, I want to fix the load order um, so that you know people remaining on 5.7 can have a, a solid load order. So I want to run that through MLOCs. I might do that off stream. I have a really good workflow for that now. Um, so yeah, I think those are the two main things. Um, if I don't have all of that in order tomorrow, I will work on it Monday. I have some time off work coming up, so be able to focus on this a little bit more. And uh, and yeah, so good call out. I would like to have 5.7 closed up and out there within a few days, though. So, ah, Herdrax says, MLOX changed a lot with the last rules update, at least compared to what's up on the site. Yeah, for sure. What's up on the site is old so we gotta that's why i really i think it's important to get that updated before we really dive into uh, additions and changes so 
All right, fellas. Well, uh, it's lunchtime for me, and um, it's been a great stream. I think we looked at a lot of cool stuff today, and uh, tomorrow we'll begin the festivities of checking out the new goodies, deciding what we're going to keep, deciding what I missed, and, and all that stuff. So, yeah. If you got some stuff you want me to cover and you're not sure if I'm covering it, get ready. Get ready to share it in the in the chat tomorrow, and we'll see you there. And uh, happy modding, and have a have a lovely day to all of you. Cheers. <laughs>